Hello and welcome to Fraser 365. My name is Chris Montgomery, Senior Pastor of Fraser Church in Montgomery, Alabama. Thank you for joining us on this journey as we study the life of the prophet Jonah and discover our life mission. This is Day 10 of Jonah. Today's title is The Presence of the Lord. A.W. Tozer said, Nothing in or of this world measures up to the simple pleasure of experiencing the presence of God. Never let the presence of a storm cause you to doubt the presence of God. Today's text is Jonah 2, verses 3 through 4. It reads, You threw me into the ocean depths, and I sank down to the heart of the sea. The mighty waters engulfed me. I was buried beneath your wild and stormy waves. Then I said, O Lord, you have driven me from your presence. Yet I will look once more toward your holy temple. Jonah continues to pray inside the belly of the great fish. While there, he acknowledges that God had sent him there and that God is in control. The runaway prophet prayed, You threw me into the ocean depths. While the sailors physically threw him into the sea, Jonah realized that God was behind it all. The last part of verse 3 gives us these words from Jonah. I was buried beneath your wild and stormy waves. In this statement, the prodigal prophet credits God's sovereignty over his creation. The first step towards repentance involves acknowledging your sin while realizing God's authority and power. Jonah 2.4 records a very intriguing comment by Jonah. O Lord, you have driven me from your presence. That statement leads to this question. If God is present everywhere, then how could Jonah flee from his presence? The omnipresence of God is a central fact found in Scripture. This is the second time that Jonah has recorded these words. Jonah 1.3 states that the prophet paid the fare and got into the boat to go with them to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord. What do these statements mean, and why did Jonah think that he could go to a place where God wasn't present? Several truths from the book of Jonah lead us to conclude that Jonah did not believe he could escape God's presence. First, remember Jonah's answer when the sailors asked him a series of questions. Jonah said, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. This statement implies that Jonah realized no one can hide from God. The Living Translation tries to correct this idea by translating Jonah 1.3 as follows. But Jonah got up and went in the opposite direction to get away from the Lord. He went down to the port of Joppa, where he found a ship leaving for Tarshish. He bought a ticket and went on board, hoping to escape from the Lord by sailing to Tarshish. In other words, Jonah 1.3 explains that Jonah ran from God's calling, not his actual presence. Now in Jonah 2.4, Jonah says that God has driven him from his presence. The second truth is that Jonah is praying to God in this verse. Why would Jonah pray and speak to a God who wasn't present? Jonah believed that since God created everything, there is nothing that escapes his presence. However, He also understood that sin can separate us from God. In his sinful nature, Jonah felt like God was a million miles away. Jonah's physical senses told him he was sinking into the depths of the sea, away from God's throne on high. However, Jonah's spiritual faith called out to the God he knew could always hear his cry for help. That's why, right after Jonah mentioned being away from God's presence, he declared, Yet I will look once more toward your holy temple. Jonah believed that when he confessed his sins and called on God, God would hear his prayer. There's a battle going on between our sin and God's holiness. When sin does separate us from a holy God, God's sovereignty and omnipresence mean that he can always hear the prayers of his repentant children. One of the greatest spiritual truths we can learn is that there is no escaping from God's presence. Even when we call out from the depths of despair, from an ocean of sin, God hears and responds. 
Psalm 139 provides a good example of the truths we learn today. It reads, O Lord, you have examined my heart and know everything about me. You know when I sit down or stand up. You know my thoughts, even when I'm far away. You see me when I travel and when I rest at home. You know everything I do. You know what I'm going to say before I say it, Lord. You go before me and follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my head. Such knowledge is too powerful, too wonderful for me, too great for me to understand. I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I go down to the grave, you are there. Questions for today. How have you felt separated from God when you were running from him? How does knowing God hears your prayer give you the courage to repent from sin in your life and turn back to him? How does Jonah's spiritual direction impact his spiritual perception? Join me in prayer. Lord, thank you that no matter the state of our heart, you're prepared to receive us in prayer. I do pray today that you would teach us how to seek you. Thank you that we can always come back to you, no matter how far we've traveled away. Thank you, Lord. In Christ's name, amen. Amen.